Singu. Uh, so I, I have to get used to this microphone. Uh, yesterday morning, we were all blown away, literally, by Leonia. <laughs> is it loud enough or is it too loud? It's fine. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm pleased. To, uh, I'm very delighted to be here. Bom dia. Uh, and I'm also pleased that although the subject is familiar and has been around for a long time, I was already asked about uh, what the T is in here. So there will be, be at least something new on that aspect of it. So uh, at the end of the talk, there'll be a quiz, and you have to tell me what this is, okay? So get ready for it. This is work that I had done very recently uh, with an undergraduate student, amazing undergraduate. Anybody who's looking for one of the best possible graduate students should try to attract this guy, Sal Pace. He actually, he calls himself Pace, even though he's Italian. So here's the outline of what I'll be covering in the next three or four hours in the familiar Russian style. I'm going to review uh, results of the original Fermi Pasta Ulam study, and tell you who uh, Tsingao was, study the so-called alpha and beta models, remind you that they failed to see equal equilibrium, and that led to a whole field, led to solitons, led to chaos, really was the birth of nonlinear science. Uh, after the recurrences were studied, uh, Tuck and Mensel published a paper on super recurrences, uh, and I'm going to revisit their results, because uh, despite the very importance of their work, it was never really studied in detail, except in a couple of papers, and, and the papers actually had some errors in them. So we're going to confirm their results. And then we're going to find that they're actually higher order resonances, still more subtle beating. Uh, we'll look at the scaling of the periods, and the fact that if you go to extremely precise energies, you can get, apparently, the periods going to infinity, singularities in the periods. And we won't, I won't have time to go into details for what we think the mechanism is, but I will show you some data that show that. Finally, we'll discuss how the uh, breakdown uh, of these resonance occurs. Uh, the second order resonances, by the way, are the, the super recurrences. Uh, how we go to metastable states, and the alpha and beta models behave very differently. And another important result we'll discuss is the dependence on the size of the lattice in, in the FPU problems. We always care, ab care about what happens as n goes to infinity, and I'll show you that our results basically don't depend on the size of the lattice. And then I'll conclude. So let's start. So you probably all recognize these three gentlemen. Monsieur Fermi. Pasta is not such a familiar face, but Ulam is, of course, fa fa famous. And they set out at Los Alamos in 1953 to see how equal partition and thermalization occur in simple, nonlinear, classical, dynamical systems. The person you haven't seen before is this lady, Mary Tsingo Menzel. She uh, there's a nice, very nice paper by Thierry Dachois. Uh, which you should look at, describing her, the history, and actually with a picture of the, co the actual code she wrote. She coded it for them. Uh, and here's a copy of the original preprint. You can see that the work was done by four people, including Mary Tsingu. The report was written by FPU, and they got the credit for it. Um, here's the abstract of the first page. And this is the important result. Despite their our conviction that nonlinearity would lead to uh, equal partition, they found very little evidence for it in what they studied. And I won't go through the whole paper, needless to say, but I do want to point out, especially for my mathematical friends, I won't read the quote, I have it here, but it's a long thing, uh, about they're going to define experimentally what's going on. And this, is, I would say, is the first example of experimental mathematics, where you're using a computer to gain insight into a problem that you have absolutely no idea how to handle analytically initially. There are many successful examples of that's having been done. And uh, I have a quote from von Neumann where he understood that entirely in the very early days of computation. And finally, now you notice that at least it's an acknowledgment to uh, Tsingao for her work for efficient coding of the problem and for running the computation. So she did all the work, and the others uh, uh, got the credit. So here's a simple-minded picture of the Fermi Pasta Ulam model. I left the T off there. That's a bad, bad mistake on my part this time. I didn't correct that slide. An old slide. Um, there are masses, equal, sp equal masses, uh, ends fixed with a potential between the uh, spring potential, which has the usual Hooke's law term, which is, uh, uh, leads to linear equations of motion, simple harmonic oscillator. And then it has nonlinear terms, alpha and beta, 
Uh, the models are called that. The alpha has a cubic nonlinearity, uh, the beta a quadratic nonlinearity in the Hamiltonian. Uh, and this paper actually, uh, appropriately enough, Leonian, was never published. Uh, it was only published in Fermi's Collected Works, and Ulam wrote an um, introduction to it. And I, I won't read this thing to you, you can read it yourself. But Fermi was very surprised by this result. And it kind of, uh, a little discovery, he said. And in fact, as I mentioned, I think it led essentially to all the efforts uh, on nonlinear science developed, uh, could, can be traced back, uh, modern developments to this work. So this is the alpha model. I'm not going to have a lot of equations, but you can see the Hamiltonian with the cubic nonlinearity. Uh, if we transform to normal modes, you get a normal um, Hamiltonian in normal mode space where you have cubic couplings among, among the modes. Uh, these are the actual coefficients. You can work them out. And the point was, of course, that you start uh, initially in some modes, and the modes couple, and the idea would be that eventually you would go to equal partition because of these coupling constants. Now, there, of course, there are some selection rules here uh, that make certain things not likely, but if you change n and change a lot of things, you can hopefully eventually get uh, equal partition. This is the beta model. Similar structure, quartic Hamiltonian, again changed to uh, normal modes, the Hamiltonian in normal mode space, and again you have these coupling constants uh, determined with four, now we have four um, no normal modes coupled. So if we scale, rescale the momentum and coordinates in the alpha model by Q goes to Q over alpha, P goes to P over alpha, and in the beta model, by Q goes to Q over square root of beta, P goes to P, uh, P over square root of beta, then this, if with an energy E, this leads to a scaled Hamiltonian where you can measure things in terms of alpha squared E and beta times E. So basically, this allows us to investigate the problem in terms of just the results of E alpha squared and E beta and not necessarily having to change them independently. That's an important scaling result. So I want to think about that for a second. So what are the results we find? So this is the original FPU results. Only the lo uh, lowest normal modes, the first five, were studied. This is actually from the Fermi's Collected Works, page nine, uh, 982. Uh, let's take some time to see this. This is a plot after out of their original preprint. Uh, here is the initial mode. It was all in, it was, uh, this is 32 sites uh, with uh, all the energy in the lowest mode. So a simple, a simple sine function at time zero. So here it is. There's the energy. And then you see uh, here alpha. It's the alpha model. So alpha is a one quarter. You see the first mode comes down, comes back, and then recurs. Uh, the second mode is excited here. You see that. The third mode, fourth mode, fifth mode. And you notice in this picture there are no excitations of modes higher than five in that thing. So. But you do see also that this mode 1 recurs almost exactly. This is a, something like 95% of the energy. So obviously, they haven't got a strong enough nonlinearity. So they went, did the same calculation. Again, you can't read this, but this is alpha equals 1 instead of a quarter. And in fact, the recurrence occurs at an earlier time. So this was really quite striking uh, and a very surprising result. But still more surprising, and this is the original work of, of Tuck and Menzel, that there were so-called super recurrences. These are the FPU periods. And down here, in terms of number of fundamental frequency oscillations, there's the super period. And Menzel is now a, a co-author. That's her married name, married single Menzel. Uh, what's really interesting and uh, uh, impossible, it's an eye chart test. Notice the, the date up here is February 1961. So Tuck and Menzel had these results already in, in 1961, but they weren't published until 72 uh, after, so imagine having an 11-year gap between getting an interesting result and publishing it. That's not, not going to happen these days. Uh, but it was basically they, they were asked to publish it because people were interested in the result. Uh, this picture, <laughs> this gentleman who looks like a, a criminal, uh, is, is uh, Jim Tuck. I actually do him much better looking than that. We've already seen Mary, Mary Singo Menzel. This is probably his badge, badge picture from Los Alamos 
They didn't really care how, how you looked in your badge pictures. And this is, again, this is their, this is their paper published in 72. So we're going to revisit their results first. Um, as I said, uh, following the publication of the paper in, in 72, there are many references to it, but nobody ever really did anything with it. So there are except for two serious studies. One was by Drago and Medela uh, in 87. So you look at the time scales here, our, our decades. Uh, what they found, uh, they agreed with uh, Tuck and Mensel for the alpha model, uh, but their data suggested that, that the beta results were an artifact of the step size that, uh, that, uh, Tuck, uh, uh, that Tuck and Mensel had taken. In fact, we'll show you that it, uh, uh, Tuck and Mensel were right. Uh, they are these uh, higher order superperiods do occur in the beta model, and we'll explain why um, uh, Drago and Medela missed them. Uh, by the way, I should watch my notation. I'll be doing this later. Second order resonances are the superperiods that Tuck and Mensel saw, two ORs. Another important work, uh, still later, by Scholl and Henry, where they looked at the recurrence times, again, they used what they called a shifted perturbation uh, treatment. That's just a fancy way of saying that we know in nonlinear systems, the period depends on the amplitude or the energy. And so if you shift it according to the energy, you get uh, a better perturbation treatment. They also showed that uh, the second order resonances were present in the alpha model. But in the beta lattice, they only found these second order resonances for a special case of n equals 7, despite searching uh, all n less than 20. Um, they interpreted this as a result of a unique nonlinear resonance that exists only for n equals 7. But uh, again, in the, in the ensuing slides, I'll show you that they actually missed the second order recurrences because they looked at too low an energy uh, and uh, with too near integrability. Uh, we, we find second order resonance in the beta model as well. So the summary of, uh, this is sort of a summary of the central results that we're going to find. Basically, Tuck and Mensel were right. These superperiods exist. And furthermore, higher order superperiods exist beyond the superperiods. Um, I guess to give you a mental picture so it doesn't sound too confusing, these things are all modulations. The superperiods are modulations. Yes, Felix. This is correct. Yeah. So everything I'm talking about today will be for one mode excited. Um, but the idea, the picture you want to have in your mind is the superperiods are sort of modulations of the, of the periods. The, the third order resonances are modulations of the superperiods. The fourth are modulations of the third with a increasingly fine, uh, re finely resolved energy. And we'll, we'll see that in detail uh, in, in the figures. The rest of the talk is going to be almost exclusively pictures. Uh, so what I will do is uh, graphs of, of our numerical results. Uh, and I'll talk about them, uh, hopefully, not in too rapid a time. So to compare with the previous results, uh, the people who studied this problem all, all used fixed initial conditions, zero, zero momenta, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the QNs, uh, if they uh, were taken with fixed amplitudes. So this, when you look at, uh, put in n equals 1 here for the lowest mode, this corresponds to an initial energy in the alpha model of this form, a squared times sine squared. And in the beta model, this term plus a to the fourth beta time form. So again, as I said, both Tuck and Mensel and uh, Drago and Modella considered conditions with a equals 1. And in the next slide, uh, I'll show you our recalculation of uh, Tuck and Mensel's figure. This is the, the figure I showed you before. Uh, there are time for this first superperiod is uh, this in terms of fundamental units. And it's within a, a percent of that found by Tuck and Mensel. So this is well within the expected computational differences, uh, given uh, the fact that we used, uh, I think, a, a fancier integrator uh, with more accuracy uh, than they had available at the time. So here's some pretty pictures. Let's see what they mean. Uh, here's the energy scale. This is times times 10 to the third. This is times times 10 to the fourth. So this is a factor of 10 longer scale. What you see here are the results of the first mode, the second mode, the third mode in green, and the fourth mode in, uh, in red. And you see that the periods, uh, they, all have, they all have recurrences. 
And furthermore, they actually all have effectively, in this energy range, super recurrences. These, these recurrent super recurrences. Um, the recurrence, uh, by the way, uh, it's a tricky calculation because the recurrences don't always occur. You, uh, well, I'll come back to this in a second. You have to decide exactly which of these peaks corresponds to the recurrence when you look in very fine detail. So we take an average of recurrence times in our calculation. So the recurrence time here is 1.66 times 10, 10 to the third. And these are super recurrences, 2.53 times 10 to the fourth. And again, that's not exactly what I wrote down here. I had 2.45, but that's because you need to average, you, you need to decide which of the recurrences actually represents a super recurrence. It's, 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 uh, you'll see in, in more detail later, but, but it's, uh, it's not quite clear uh, exactly where the super recurrence should be, especially when you have uh, very fine energy scales. So basically, this is reproducing the results of Tuck and Mensel. Um, this is for the beta lattice, where, uh, as we said, uh, Drago and Mandela claimed they did not see the super recurrences. In the beta lattice, there's a selection rule, so only odd modes can be excited. Um, from if you start with initially an odd mode, one. If you start initially with an even mode, only even modes can be excited. So apropos of Felix's question, it would be interesting to look at, say, mode two or a combination of mode one and mode two. Um, let me tell you, these, co these computations are extremely expensive. We heard that a little bit yesterday. Uh, and so expensive in terms of computer time, which of course in some sense should be free, but it isn't. Uh, so doing them for a wide set of initial conditions is not something we wanted to start with. So this is reproducing the Tuck-Mensel results for the lattice, n equals 31, this energy, this beta. Um, again, here now, this panel shows the recurrence time of basically 5,000, uh, 5, uh, and the super recurrence time of basically uh, 40,000. Uh, notice that mo mode 1, the blue mode, here, here are the recurrences. There's a super recurrence, there's a super recurrence. They show clear super recurrences. Uh, the other modes down here seem to show more complex structures. Uh, we're not, I'll not go into them uh, that detail here now because we want to focus on the recurrences, the higher order recurrences beyond the super recurrences. So here's the Drago and Rodello result. This is, uh, this is uh, let's see. This is the uh, figure from our paper using the same parameters as Tuck and Mensel. Our results agree. So this is this is uh, these are our results. This is Drago and Rodella, and basically these results are in complete agreement in this energy range. But remember, they claimed that they did not see the uh, 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 super recurrence in in, uh <coughs> in uh, the beta model. But in fact, if you go into a much finer energy range, so I should have I should have used the figure instead of taking it from the s the, the paper. But you can't probably read this, but this is about, these are in units of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.02. These are 0 0.075, 0 0.077, 0 0.079. So much factor of, uh, of uh, uh, almost 100 finer scale. And what you see here are the uh, recurrences, the, the so-called 1 ORs are the FB recurrences, and the 2 ORs are shown in blue. And now you see what the problem is. You have to decide whether this is the super recurrence or that. Though these are the, the, the lines, of course, are just drawn to connect the, the dots, which are the actual data points. Uh, and so if depending on whether you decide this or that is the actual super recurrence, or this or that, you get a slightly different period. And so it's good to take an average. And this is as Drag uh, Drago and Rodella used a particular uh, step size which was a square root of 2 over 400. Our results were for uh, 10 to the minus 3. So th this is an example of how there it's clear there are second order recurrences, super periods in the beta lattice, but they're extremely subtle. And the key to the observation was to use a very small step size uh, so that the dynamics is accurately reversible. Um, despite all we know about chaos, these are Hamiltonian systems. And if you, gather, if you have exact numerics, quote unquote, you should be able to reverse them and get back to the exact initial condition. And we actually, that's a uh, serious test on the step size we use, which needs to vary with energy. And basically, to cut to the chase, all our results uh, that I'll show you today are reversible. 
uh, I have a slide that shows the, da uh, the data. Uh, typically, uh, with error in returning to the initial energy of 10 to the minus, typically 10 to the minus 10 or 10 to the minus 12. So they're, they're accurate. So this is the result from Scholl and Henry. That's their picture. And you see this is for n equals 7. This is their particular value of epsilon. The fast oscillations are the FPU recurrences. And these are clear uh, superperiods. Uh, so they, they found it only, as I said, for n equals 7. The reason was, uh, as I said before, the results are very subtle. Their shifted frequency perturbation theory says that this superperiod should be given by, this is the shifted frequency, capital Omega, five times the initial frequency, and, and the lowest period, oops, five times the lowest, uh, the, the lowest shifted frequency, minus uh, one times the seventh frequency. And in terms of the original frequencies, the uh, unperturbed, uh, frequencies of the, of the oscillators, and beta, you have this form. Now, this, was, this result agrees very well with both our numerics and their numerics, so I'm quite confident it's correct. But it also suggests very clearly that if you select the value, uh, mu1 and mu2 are complicated coefficients. Shifted, uh, perturba shifted perturbation theory is not something I recommend for amateurs. It's really nasty. Um, but these are coefficients, numerical coefficients. And so you can imagine that if you tune... Omega 1 and omega 7 are given once you have the size of the, of, of the lattice, which is 7. Uh, and you can imagine this denominator can actually go to exactly to 0 if you, pick, uh, if you pick exactly the right value of beta. And that's exactly what happens. And that suggests that the period of the second order, uh, the super recurrence, could go to infinity. And in fact, we'll see that we have numerical results that suggest that. So that ends the review of, of the material. Uh, I went through it pretty fast. So are there any questions at this stage? Okay, so here are our new results. The first one, which uh, uh, was suggested by uh, Scholl, Scholl and Henry, but they didn't find it, that can there exist still higher order rev uh, uh, resonances, namely three ORs that are modulations of the second order resonances. So higher order, HOR, higher order resonances. We want to look at the scaling of their periods. Uh, and as I said, we'll see apparent singularities at very well-defined precise energies. We also want to see how they break down and how we go to thermalization. We'll see that there are states that last for a seemingly quite a long time. And there are some important and subtle differences between the alpha and beta model in how they break down, how these resonances break down, and what that means about going to equal partition. And finally, I'll talk about the dependence on lattice size. Here, the statement is simple. The basic results do not seem to depend on lattice size which is very interesting because it means they make it may be accurate for any value of n. And the n goes to infinity limit, of course, is one of the big questions. So there's a lot of words on this slide. Uh, so I, I guess I just point out what they are. Uh, we observed these higher order resonances. Uh, as I said, Scholl and Henry mentioned the possibility of their existence. Uh, their technique provides uh, an analytical tool to investigate these uh, resonances, but the modulations are so extremely small that to see them would requ requires numerics no matter how much analytics you do. So uh, that's why they did not see them. Uh, this, their observation is agreed with our results. Um, and it, again, as these values get smaller, these uh, higher order resonances become incredibly subtle, as you'd expect, because the lattices are nearing their integral limits. Uh, I've said this now uh, bef again before, but let me confirm. We use time reversal sim uh, symmetry to confirm that our numerical results are accurate. And question, yes. Sorry, Julio. Very small time steps and, and, and a symplectic integrator. I if you have the exponential instability will set in. If, uh, if you get close enough, you can, you can always time reverse it. Yes. We can't reverse it. No. Not, it, sometimes we can. Is that your question, Julio? If we run it all the way. So we do not typically study things at equal partition, unlike, you know, I don't know what Sergei talked about. But we run it up to, we, we up run it up to the breakdown. And we can't always time reverse it. If you, I'll show you. I don't have the slides here, but in the paper you'll take a look and you'll see it. And we say when we can't reverse it. But 
the results I'll show you are all, all reversible. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important point. Thanks for mentioning that. Okay, so here is a, uh, a, a figure. This is, uh, I'll take some time on this because it's a little hard to interpret because of, again, the question of exactly which peak you assign to a given resonance. So the, the first order resonance, the FP re resonances, are shown in red. The second order ones, the superperiods of Tuck and Menzel, are shown in uh, blue. And the higher order resonances, which are modulations of these, so-called third order, in magenta and the fourth in green. So notice the very difference, differences in energy scale. Here's 0.25 to 1. Here's 0.999 to 1. So down by a factor of, what, 1,000? Uh, here's 0.92 to 1. Here's 0.99. So to see these higher order resonances, you need to go to fi finer and finer scales, which is not surprising. So. Uh, and th this is a, a plot of the proportion of the energy in the initial state. And just as we said, you get closer and closer to a perfect recurrence in these higher order resonances. Yes? Uh, that's based, well that, uh, the people who did that were, uh, were uh, Scholl and Henry. Uh, and uh, to some extent, Drago and Modella, but they didn't have fine enough energy things. Yes, this is how we did it. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think the subtlety and the energies here, I don't know that you'd get an accurate expression for it. We, we, could, we could try it. Uh, uh, Sal has, has some of the data, or they couldn't store it all. But I mean, this is the simplest way to see it, and it's quite visual. So here, here are the recurrences you see. With the periods we said, they're, they're on the order of, uh, of uh, uh, 25,000, actually, roughly, for these values. This is the alpha lattice. So here is the, there are the FPU recurrences. Here are the, uh, the super recurrences of Tuck and Menzel, second order. Here are the super recurrences, the blue, and the purple are the third order ones. And again, you see the challenge of deciding whether this peak or that one, this peak or that one, this peak or that one is the actual third order recurrence. And finally, the fourth order recurrences sit on top of the third order ones. And again, you have here the question of that one or that one. And so you need to take averages to get the rough times. This is an example uh, with, uh, again, 31, uh, 31 sites and with an energy of, uh, of E alpha squared equals, uh, this is actually wrong. That's, that's 10 to the minus 4. Yes, question. Felix. No, it's not in perturbation theory. It's just an ordering of the resonances. So this, the, the third order resonances are resonances on the second order resonances. Okay, so it's not perturbation theory. It's exact integration of the equations of motion. Yeah. Well, within numerics. This is in the beta model. Let me see how I'm doing on time. In the beta model, uh, I, th I think I don't have to go through the same, same steps. Um, uh, again, you can see, you can here are the fourth order resonances, here are the third, here are the second, and we have the exact same structure. They are modulations. The each higher order is a modulation on the next lowest order. Now, what's really interesting is if you look at periods of, this is the third order resonance and the fourth order resonance. This is an alpha. You see that if you go into a very fine energy range, there seem to be singularities. Obviously, we can't get an infinite period in our, uh, in our computing, but this is pretty clear indication. And that would be consistent with what uh, uh, Henry, Scholl and Henry said, that if you have a denominator that is expressed in terms of the uh, basic resonances and parameters, you can tune that denominator within a precise energy range to exactly zero and drive the period to infinity. Um, interestingly, uh, we did not see any apparent singularities for the superperiods in the alpha FPUT. Um, that's, I don't think we missed them, but uh, we didn't see them. No, no, in the alpha model, this is, this is the alpha model. So let me, be careful, let me be careful. Yeah, I went too fast. In this, there are no singularities in the, the two ORs. There are singularities in the three ORs and the four ORs. Those are the, what, what the superscripts mean. So this is a fourth order 
resonance, third order resonance, both of these seem to exhibit singularities for particularly very narrow uh, E alpha squared ranges. And again, this is a, a, an equation which ex explains my remark. You have to decide which, how, uh, which of the peaks corresponds to uh, a given superperiod. W is the largest integer such, uh, such that you are nearest the super, the super period. So you average over these. Here's the beta results, Sergey. Uh, here we see uh, singularities, apparently, in the second order period, the third order period, and the fourth order period. So for all these, again, extremely narrow range, ranges, and as you go to higher order resonances, the, the range, as you'd expect, gets tinier and tinier. We, no. I don't know. We haven't seen it. Um, is that possible? Would it be true? I can't give you a, any uh, strong argument why not, except it, it hasn't been observed, and the resonances are so strong. I don't. I don't the, the answer is I don't know. So why don't I say that? Okay. Um, again, the periods here are paid by averaging. Uh, this is a little technical, and I don't want. I want to leave time for more questions. So what happens is uh, there's a, a nesting uh, of the uh, the uh, for, uh, of the different resonances uh, as you approach the apparent singularity. So again, we have the same color coding as before, and you see that these these uh, this is uh, a ten to the sixth. The reason this is black is because it's, there's so many, these lines become so dense, they become black. Here's a uh, time 10 to the 6, and you see that the uh, second order resonance are, are here, the third order resonance come down, and then a second order resonance comes in with exactly the same kind of period. And so basically, the new resonances occur, and the, the periods become the same, and so you have to, have to decide uh, which is which, and that apparently uh, leads, to, leads to the singularities. Um, this is, uh, these are all details. The point is, here's, uh, here's A and B, showing what's happening with the uh, respective uh, proportion of the energy returned to the initial state. And here is uh, C and D, sorry, B and D are, are zoomed in on, on, on A and B, A and C, uh, to show uh, that the uh, resonances are nesting, they're coming together in time, leading to the singularities in this ter interpretation. I think the better interpretation, as I said, is that you have, expect to have these resonance denominators with shifted frequencies, and they can go to zero for very precise uh, values of them. Uh, again, this is in the beta lattice. Again, you see this nesting of the, uh, of the this is the now average of T3. Uh, for A and, uh, yeah, this highlights, so the point is th these frequencies become, the, the uh, nest together, they come together and uh, lead to the apparent singularities. So this is a breakdown of the, uh, the, uh, the resonances and the road, road to thermalization. This is the uh, alpha lattice, and you can see where the regions this is, these are the different values of the energy, or E alpha squared. You can see, wh when you start seeing all this mess in here, the periods are getting sloppy. They're not quite exactly the same. So basically, as you increase for this value, uh, again, this is, uh, this is a 31 sites. For these values of energy, the alpha, uh, the alpha model, the higher order resonances, the second order resonances, become sloppier and sloppier. And they lose their shape on a time scale and they never quite truly form, so you don't have this long time when you have good second-order resonances. And here's an example of that. Uh, if you look at, these are uh, the, uh, the second-order resonances, and what you see is uh, these little, but in between the resonances, here and here, these sort of mini resonances seem to come up. And they, they distort the form of the alpha re second-order resonances, so the super uh, resonances, the period two, sorry, the two ORs tend to start, fail to form in, in the, uh, 
in the alpha model. Uh, and uh, the lack of formation leads to the destruction of the resonances. In the beta model, what happens is, is, uh, is simpler in some sense. Here are, here's an example where you see the, the res resonances and the superperiods, so the one ORs and the two ORs. Uh, again, notice that this is a much, uh, much finer time scale, much larger time scale, so what's, what's visible here as the resonances is becomes solid blue there. And what happens as um, you, for these are for very close energy ranges, uh, beta superperiods exist, and suddenly they don't. They just break down suddenly. In contrast to the alpha model, where the breakdown is slow, and the result is, is, is a result that the resonances themselves are badly formed. So here's an example, uh, and maybe a clearer picture. We're plotting what is standardly uh, plotted uh, as a measure of equal partition. Uh, that is, the, this is in particular the, the, ent the, the entropy. Uh, we use a time average entropy because, of, as I talked about, the fluctuations. Uh, this is the alpha model, and you see that it, it, they, we, have, we didn't track it all the way out to, uh, to the breakdown, but you see that y the plateau is not staying the same. The resonances are sort of getting sloppy before it breaks down. And here's the beta model, uh, slightly different uh, times to break down, but sudden breakdown. So in, in the beta model, the sudden breakdown occurs. In the alpha model, not. It's a little bit sloppy. So let's ask whether um, the apparent singularities depend on the lattice size. Um, so we did, we did, up to now, we've done mostly n equals 31. This is n equals 63, n equals 127. These are the alpha model results. These are the singularities in the third order, high, third high order resonance, uh, uh, 3OR. And you see that they occur at uh, slightly different values of, uh, of the energy of E alpha squared, but they both occur. So the singularities are still there. Uh, this is the beta lattice. Again, you see the singularities still appear. This one, of course, uh, for the larger system sizes, it's harder to get these energy ranges as, as detailed because the run times are so much longer. But you can see there's clear evidence that there do appear to be these singularities. So um, we speculate, and I think it's pretty good speculation, that these uh, singularities are not uh, unique to the particular lattice size and that they should be seen for all finite n. Question? I'm sorry, Julia, sorry? In this case, um, th in this case, uh, E beta is about, a, it, it doesn't increase here. It does appear, E alpha squared does appear to increase here. And so um, I'll show you uh, the form of it in the next slide. But we did not, we were not able to study systematically how this, uh, because, of, because of the run times are so long, how this changes with system size. This is simply to show that the singularities exist, not exactly how they behave, okay? And this is, uh, the reason is that there's a scaling argument that goes back to Zabuski that the, the, uh, the natural scaling of time is to go from time to time over n plus 1 cubed, uh, because the period, the recurrence time, basically grows as the cube of the lattice size, okay, uh, at fixed other parameters. This was first shown by Zabuski, uh, actually using a KDV argument, uh, and then it was shown numerically by Zabuski and also analytically by Toda at some level. This is, so rescaling these things, this, this goes to your question, Julio. Uh, rescaling E alpha squared by n plus 1 cubed and the period by n plus 1 cubed, you expect the energies, uh, the, the lattice, the singularities to occur at the same values. Here we see four different values of n up to 166. Uh, and they occur quite close to this value. Um, it turns out this rescaling is uh, not exact. It's an approximation. Uh, they, uh, and it's approximation which is good in the large n limit, as you might expect, from the n plus 1 cubed. So the 31 is a little bit off. The others tend to be closer. And it's really quite good agreement. Um, so this is, this is the alpha. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, T3. Th uh, this is for the alpha model. Such a scaling 
uh, was not derived, has not been derived for the beta lattice, but what this so song suggests, at least in the alpha lattice, the singularities are where you expect them to be and, and uh, are not changed in, in inherently by changing n. So here is the breakdown mechanism. Remember I said what you see is as you get, go toward breakdown, you see how sloppy these, recurren these super recurrences are. They're not, equal, they're not equal in height. This one is, is that looks like it's split. So they've already started to break down, but you're still in a region where you're nowhere near equilibrium, but they're breaking down. They, so basically the idea is they lose their shape, and it's hard to tell where they really are. Um, so the idea is that sort of these mini recurrences that I showed you on one slide where I had the little double hump in between humps uh, are, are destroying the uh, super recurrences in, uh, in the alpha model. In the beta model, there's again, because of the sharp breakdown, uh, you can see here the, the super recurrences are, are, are pretty fine. That's why they're hard to see. Look at the tiny bit of energy there. And um, this is a value V beta. See, they're even more subtle here. And the breakdown is such that this is for a small n, n equals 18. Uh, this is to show that the breakdown is not size dependent. We see, again, uh, essentially solid recurrences, and then suddenly it collapses and breaks down. And the, so the breakdown of the super recurrences is associated with a breakdown from the metastable state, this picture. Oops, this one. And uh, it's a sudden breakdown due to uh, the, the, the destruction of the two ORs. Okay, so actually I finished well ahead of time. Sergey asked me to do that. Um, what we've done is to uh, resolve the question as to whether Tuck and Mensel were right. That was an open question in the literature. I couldn't believe it when we found only two papers who had looked at it in detail. Uh, they, their actual numbers may not have been right, but their conclusion was correct. The super, super recurrences, super periods, two Rs, occur in both alpha and beta FPU. We then showed that there are higher order resonances, which are modulations on modulations. Uh, and uh, we, w we studied up to four ORs. Uh, there's no reason to, to doubt that at more, even more subtle energies, there are five ORs. But I don't think it's worth the computer time or effort to go and prove that now that we understand more or less the mechanism of the formation of these higher order resonances. Um, we looked at how the scaling, the higher order resonances uh, scaled, they're how their periods scaled. And we found these apparent singularities, which I repeat, are probably best understood conceptually in terms of the vanishing of energy denominators at very precise values of the parameters. Um, we showed how the energies, uh, uh, how the second order resonances broke down, and you started to approach thermalization or equal partition. Again, I stress we, did not, uh, we were not interested in running it to equal partition, but we wanted to see the breakdown mechanism. Uh, we found that there are metastable states in both alpha and beta uh, F, uh, FBUT models, but there were differences in the sense that the breakdown of the alpha model was due to the basic uh, falling apart of the residents themselves a little by little. They got sloppier and sloppier Whereas in the beta model, the res resonances remained robust until they suddenly crashed. Uh, and then we discussed the dependence on, on lattice size and showed that th our major results were not dependent on lattice size in the range, uh, say, from, from 18 to 160. Um, so we think that the end dependence is fairly well uh, understood and it's not, not striking, not, not, uh, does not change anything uh, qualitatively. So with that, I'll say muito obrigado and, and take questions. Thank you. That, that's Sal explaining the results at a recent symposium. Oh, yeah.